When exploring the landscape of horrific images that Stephen King has conjured through his career, one which stands out is that of an eight-year-old girl literally setting the world around her aflame. Firestarter is often cited as a favorite book among Stephen King fans. Yet the 1984 film adaptation has many detractors, including King himself. Starring an eight-year-old Drew Barrymore, fresh off her breakthrough success in E.T. the Extraterrestrial, the Mark L. Lester-directed Firestarter proved to be a lukewarm King adaptation, both at the box office and with critics. Now, seen as a cult classic, Firestarter has proven to be more of a case of novelty over quality, leading us to ask, in this video, what the f*** happened to this horror movie? Firestarter was first published in September 1980, King's eighth novel, and still remains one of his most popular early works, and was nominated for several awards, including Best Novel for the British Fantasy Award. Firestarter centers on Charlie McGee, an eight-year-old girl who is cursed with the power of pyrokinesis, which is the ability to control heat and fire. Charlie and her father Andy, who has telepathic abilities, are on the run from the shop, a shady government organization who want to weaponize Charlie's abilities. As Charlie's power increases, she becomes a danger to herself and everyone around her. Legendary producer Dino De Laurentiis paid one million for the film rights to the book. De Laurentiis had previously produced an adaptation of The Dead Zone in 1983 and would go on to produce more adaptation of Stephen King's novels. Cat's Eye in 1985, Silver Bullet also in 1985, Maximum Overdrive in 1986, and Sometimes They Come Back in 1991. The original choice to direct Firestarter was horror master John Carpenter, who at the time was putting the finishing touches on The Thing. I want to thank you guys for watching What the F*** Happened to This Horror Movie and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now, like this video, and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. And now, back to the show. Carpenter hired his fellow The Thing screenwriter Bill Lancaster to adapt the novel and later would bring on Bill Phillips to write another version of the screenplay. When The Thing was released in theaters to disappointing box office results and lukewarm reaction from critics, Universal decided to move on from Carpenter. Ironically, Carpenter and Phillips would go on to work on another King adaptation, Christine, which proved to be the much more successful movie. De Laurentiis personally called Class of 1984 director Mark L. Lester with an offer to direct Firestarter which Lester gladly accepted. Lester brought on Oscar-nominated writer Stanley Mann to adapt the novel, and together they delivered a script that was much closer to King's novel than Carpenter's script, which was discarded. After reading the screenplay, De Laurentiis was ecstatic with how Mann and Lester had essentially adapted King's book entirely. The role of Charlie was much sought after, with names such as Jennifer Connelly considered. According to Lester, the final two actors up for the role were Drew Barrymore and the late Heather O'Rourke, who many know from Poltergeist. Eight-year-old Barrymore, who melted hearts as Gertie in E.T., won the role in the end. Ironically, both Barrymore and O'Rourke were also both up for the part of Carol Ann in Poltergeist, in which, of course, O'Rourke was cast. In a story shared by Barrymore, a few years prior to being cast in the film, her mother thought that Drew had a close resemblance to the girl on the novel's cover. According to Barrymore, quote, my mom had seen this book at the grocery store with a picture of a little girl on it, and she said, gee, this looks kind of like you. She said it was okay if I bought it, and so I did. When I read it, I came into the kitchen where my mom was making dinner and said, I'm the Firestarter, I'm Charlie McGee, but she didn't know what I was talking about. Firestarter was Barrymore's first lead role, a feat for a young actor, which Lester applauded. Quote, this picture she really had to carry because she's in every scene in the movie, and I know it was a difficult job for her, but she came through great. For the role of Andy, Oscar winner Richard Dreyfuss was attached to the role when Carpenter was the director. In the end, the role went to David Keith, who just had his breakthrough role in An Officer and a Gentleman. Originally, Carpenter was in talks for his Assault on Precinct 13 actor, Darwin Jolston, to take the lead role of ruthless and creepy hitman, John Rainbird. The role instead went to the legendary George C. Scott. In order to get the Oscar winner in the movie, De Laurentiis directly asked Universal for an additional one million to cover Scott's salary, which they agreed to. As Captain Hollister, the slimy bureaucratic head of the shop, the dependable Martin Sheen took on the role at a late stage, 
after Burt Lancaster had to withdraw following heart surgery. For Sheen, the role of Hollister was very reminiscent of a previous Kingpin character he portrayed in The Dead Zone, presidential candidate Greg Stilson, who Sheen plays with the same coiffed hair intensity. In the role of Charlie's mother, Vicki McGee, was Heather Locklear. Although the blonde sex symbol was a TV star with roles on DJ Hooker, Firestarter marked her feature film debut. Well, as a guest on The Drew Barrymore Show, Locklear said, quote, I was only 21 at the time, and I couldn't believe I was playing a mother of a little girl. I had no idea. I had no young siblings. I don't know what I'm doing, but Drew helped. She was just charming and adorable. Rounding out the cast were Oscar winners Louise Fletcher and Art Carney as the Menders, a couple who take in Charlie and Andy when on the run from the shop. Carney suggested that his character should wear a hearing aid, since the then 65-year-old actor needed one. Lester liked the idea and agreed. Firestarter was filmed in Wilmington, North Carolina. De Laurentiis had a vision in 1983 to build a filming community away from the celebrity and distraction of Hollywood, with Firestarter the first production to kick off his new venture. To save money on the film, De Laurentiis brought in crew from Italy, including cinematographer Giuseppe Rosalini, who previously worked on Sergio Leone's A Fistful of Dynamite. De Laurentiis also brought to Wilmington over 20 crew from England, who trained a number of locals that are still working in the industry today. Said De Laurentiis' wife Martha, quote, it was always something he enjoyed, bringing in crews from around the world, camera crews from Italy, plasterers and carpenters and production designers from South England, the visual effects from Los Angeles, and the costume designers from England. He wanted to make that commitment to bringing in the best and then training the local community to be a film community. He wanted to create a depth of film crew. Because of her young age, Barrymore had to be filmed on a soundstage for certain scenes, which were shot at night, because the production could not have her work all night long. One of those scenes was the film's fiery conclusion, in which Charlie unleashes her full power with extreme prejudice. All the film's special effects were done on set through the use of real fire, remote-controlled prosthetics, wires, and stunt people. Lester has stated that Firestarter was the hardest film he has ever made. Quote, that was all practical effects, said Lester. The fireballs you see, that's not CGI. Back then, we actually created fireballs that could fly through the air. They were on a wire and could crash into buildings. We had people on fire that were on trampolines that had to flip through the air. It was very dangerous. All the effects were done right on the set. It was a pretty intense thing to do then. Remarkably, no stuntmen were injured during the making of the film. In fact, the only substantial injury was to George C. Scott, who received an infection in his eye due to a contact lens used earlier in the film. This is why his character wears an eye patch over his eye during the film's final half hour. Firestarter had its official premiere on May 9, 1984, in King's adopted hometown of Bangor. The film barely scraped by at the box office, making $17 million on a $15 million budget. The critical response was not any better, with Roger Ebert stating, the film's crucial flaw is the lack of a strong point to the story. A little girl has her dangerous power, some government agents want to examine her, Others want to destroy her, and things catch on fire. That's about it. The film's biggest critic, however, was Stephen King himself. In a 1986 interview with American Film Magazine, King said that Firestarter was, quote, flavorless, and compared it to cafeteria mashed potatoes. Of the film's cast, King was especially critical of David Keith, who he said wasn't very good. To add insult to injury, King also said that his wife commented, Keith has stupid eyes. King was also critical of the special effect in which Charlie's hair blows back from an unexplainable wind whenever she uses her psychokinetic power. However, during a recent guest spot on the Drew Barrymore show, King seemed to have softened in his criticism, saying, quote, I thought that you were terrific in that part. That was very, very difficult, and you were great. Every time you got ready to light a fire, your beautiful blonde hair would blow back. It was great. Lester never understood why King did not like Firestarter saying in an interview, quote, I knew he hated The Shining because that movie was not his book. But in case of Firestarter, he had approved the script. He even worked on it. He was on the set and we talked about everything we were doing. He loved everything. The one thing that he especially criticized, the wind blowing through Drew Barrymore's hair, that was his idea to begin with. A miniseries sequel titled Firestarter Rekindled, which starred Marguerite Moreau as a now adult Charlie McGee, premiered on the Sci-Fi Channel in 2002 to little fanfare. Soon to be released, however, is a new adaptation of Firestarter from Blumhouse, 
This stars Ryan, Kira Armstrong as Charlie, and Zac Efron as Andy. Whether it will live up to the quality of the much-loved novel remains to be seen.